what's up guys? Calvin here. It's just some commentary this time. Uh, I haven't done one of these in quite a while on my own channel. I've been doing them for Mario Kart Cinema kind of off and on. But I haven't made a straight out commentary for my channel in quite a bit. Uh, the races here are between Team Knight and Avail from IL. Uh, I think this was the week 9. Season four. So this is this is quite a few weeks ago, uh, like a month maybe, and it was a really good match actually. Um, they won the first GP by like eight, and then I think we won GP two by like sixty, and they uh, they started. We kind of lost focus, like a lot of focus uh, last GP, and they ended up like beating us quite a few races, and we were really concerned that they were about to come back but they only won the last GP by like 50 some. So we ended up winning the war and with it, our IL record was four and one. Uh, team Knight, being Team Knight's record in IL that season, uh, we got dropped into Division 3, 0 and 5, uh, replacing, I can't remember who we replaced, but uh, some team had dropped out and they were 0 and 5, I wanna say. And we had, no, no, yeah, 0 and 5, sorry. <laughs> um, or no, 1 and 5. I, I should script these more often, probably. I script, like, tiny bits of things, and then I'd get lazy and don't want to script the rest. So that's, that's me and scripting for you. Um, but, yeah, we, we got dropped in with a record of 1 and 5. Uh, the previous team had just lost to KG. And I guess the division admin wanted us to play every team at least once in the division. So we got to replay that KG match, beat them, won our first match against CB, and uh, we are off to a good start. And our own record was 5-1, and one, and we finished the division uh, in fourth. I think we basically were tied with a veil by the end of it. And that was pretty cool, because uh, this is the first time I'd gotten... A client I'd started into a competitive league like Avail, and it was fun. I mean, not <laughs> like Avail, um, competitive league like IL, and uh, it was fun to see how we performed as the leader. And uh, I really hope we do well again. We've already uh, gone two and zero in uh, Division Three this season with NI One, and we've signed up NI. We had. NI2 signed up for IL, but uh, we got we didn't get seeded. So NI2 players were just playing for NI1 whenever we needed people. And uh, but now a team dropped out in Division Seven MKR, which uh, the admins or whoever was running the division wasn't really sure if we should get dropped in in Division Seven because NI2's a pretty decent lineup still. But, uh, yeah, and I, too, is going to be playing in Division 7, so that should be fun. We're getting in, dropped in with a record of 0-2 because MKR hadn't played any of their matches before they dropped out. And it'll be fun to see if we can come back or even replay those two matches that we supposedly lost. Um, back to this war. I'm just bagging. Um, I'm pretty much, I, I pretty much bag for my clan. That's what I do. Uh, so if you're wondering why I was going backwards for a bit, or I'm hanging towards the back all the time, I'm basically just trying to get the shock for my team. And uh, sadly, you know, shock dodging and you know bagging, I I find I find it to be good and bad really. Um, I like the idea, the strategy, organizing a good shock dodge, and it feels really good when you win a race. Like hey, like we just pulled off this cool move, we had all these bottom spots, and now we just won the race. And it's kind of cool like that, because good shock dodges, getting your team in top spots from a dodge, uh, if you're just dodging one person, you know, it's not as big of a deal, but when you, like, manage to dodge, like, a good portion of your team, and you guys get top spots, that generally takes a lot of coordination, and it's something cool to pull off. Not that difficult, uh, well, it is difficult to pull it off without like a single other person on the other team dodging or getting it so none of your teammates are screwed over that aren't dodging but 
so that's the good aspect of it. It is it is a style to play this game in, relying on the shock or just uh, coordinating good dodges when you do happen to have it. But at the same time, I feel like as the community outside of the Japanese community, 5v5 is the main war type for some reason. Uh, personally, I find 6v6s are the best war type, and I'll explain that in a second. But 5v5s uh, have extremely balanced items, I will admit that. Uh, but with so few, you're less than a 6v6, and those two people less do make a difference. Um, it's fairly easy for matches to really come down to the shock. And since so many teams use the shock now, uh, so many teams rely on that. It's such a basic strategy that's just built into every good clan now that uh, the race comes down to whoever gets it. And that's kind of disappointing in a lot of ways. Uh, I feel like uh, skill and front running and lines should matter a bit more than they do in average wars. Now, given that's a 5v5, so the reason I like 6v6s are three basic reasons. One, more points. More points is always more fun. I just like I just like seeing a big table with a lot of points. It's really cool. Like uh, I, it's really rare, but occasionally a team will get to do like a 10v10 or a uh, 12v12 war, which is basically two 5v5 or two 6v6 rooms, and you combine the scores. And that's uh, really cool. If you've been lucky enough to see in a table like that, it gets the scores are insane. Uh, I think I saw one between Imperius and Flow like ages back, and or Imperius and Meteor maybe, and it was like eight hundred something to eight hundred something to seven hundred something. That's how high the scores get in like big wars like that. But anyway, it's a standard six three six. The scores are pretty high. Reason two, there's more people. I always think more people and being able to include more people is always more fun. Uh, just having more action in the room. Given some people complain that it gets too rapey, there's too much stuff going on, there's no skill involved, I, I have to argue that, and that's where my third point comes in. To play in the 6v6 and to be good in the 6v6, you have to adapt uh, to co some completely different skills. It's... You have to have much better item handling. Lines are a big portion of it still because the shock is not as effective. Like uh, sh a shock can doesn't necessarily ruin a race in a six v six like it does in a five v five, and six v sixes take a completely different aspect of skill that people don't seem to see just because they're uh, don't American players and European players don't play them very often, and as a result. Uh, they get in this feel that like when they don't succeed in a 6v6 or they don't do as well in a 6v6 individually, they feel like it's a bad war type, it's rapey, and I hate this and we shouldn't have to play it. But there's a reason the Japanese community plays 6v6s, and uh, I'm not saying every Japanese player is good. Um, I've been pretty involved in the Japanese community recently, and it's fun to see how different it is and uh, how things are in it. And as a foreigner, uh, I stick out pretty easy, and sometimes, uh, I, I, don't get me wrong, I don't understand everything. I can read, my limit, like, my understanding of Japanese is really, really low. But, uh, I, I've been involved in it, and it's fun to see how it's different and why they do 6v6s, and in reality, a 6v6 does take a lot more skill, in my opinion, and I think people need to realize that. Anyway, this is the end of this commentary. Sorry if there's like two blips in here or something. I'm filming this in my school's green screen room or recording the audio in my school's green screen room and the bell interrupted twice. Uh, it's five minutes into lunch right now and I just really wanted to get this over with. I will see you guys later. Talk to you next time.